the it's I think important for people to recognize that just because a dietary pattern falls short of the RDA doesn't mean that's unusual. All dietary patterns, have, you know, uh, will fall short of the RDA for certain nutrients. Governments have actually attempted to fill the gap by implementing nutrition education programs and fortifying food. So adding iodine to salt, adding vitamins A and D to milk, adding B vitamins and iron to grains, for example. Expanding nutrition education to include plant-based diets and fortifying plant-based staples like non-dairy milks and plant-based proteins can also help to fill the gap for plant-based eaters. These practices are actually more common in North America than Europe, which explains some of the differences between the results in North America and the results in Europe. So the next question that often comes up is, are plant-based diets safe and adequate to support the growth and development of infants and children? And we have you know, relatively limited findings, but about 30 years plus of findings. And the findings, if we're, you know, to, to look at them, you know, sort of as a totality of the evidence, lacto-ovo vegetarian children grow at least as well as omnivorous children. Actually, there was a study in the Adventist Health, health um, you know, various studies that showed the lacto-ovo vegetarian children actually were taller and bigger than the omnivorous children. So they certainly grow as well. Vegan children grow normally, although growth may be slower, especially during the toddler years. They do tend to be a little bit smaller and lighter. The most recent studies we have come out of Germany, and these are the Becci studies. There are two on toddlers and two on youths, and over 400 children were, uh, were examined per cohort. And they included vegans, lacto-ovo, vegetarian uh, children, and omnivores. They examined nutrient intakes, nutritional status, and growth. And there were no significant differences in energy intake or growth among the different dietary groups. All groups were well-nourished, although they were below reference intakes for calcium and vitamin D, with the vegans having the lowest intakes for those nutrients. However, vegans have the highest intakes of fiber, vitamin B1, B6, vitamin C, E, K, folate, iron, potassium, and magnesium, and they have the lowest intakes of sugar and saturated fat. The author's conclusion was that vegetarian, including vegan diets, can meet recommended intakes during childhood and adolescence. There was a Polish study that brought a lot of press from 2021. This study um, looked at 187 five to 10 year old children consuming either vegan, vegetarian, or omnivorous diets. The vegan diets were associated with a heart, a healthier cardio, cardiometabolic risk profile, lower fat mass, lower blood cholesterol, lower fasting glucose levels. The intakes of sugar and saturated fat were lower. The intakes of fiber were higher. But vegan diets were associated with lower intakes of calcium, vitamin D, and B12. Uh, the B12 uh, deficiency was only in unsupplemented diets. Vegan children were, however, slightly smaller and they had reduced bone density, although their bone density was still within the normal reference range. There was a Canadian study from 2022 with almost 9,000 children that found that those who eat vegetarian, including vegan diets, had similar measures of growth and nutrition compared to those who eat meat. Vegetarian children had higher odds, however, of being underweight. According to the lead author, a plant-based dietary program uh, pattern is recognized as a healthy eating pattern due to increased intake of fruits, vegetables, fiber, whole grains, and reduced saturated fat. Vegetarian diets appear to be appropriate for most children. The take-home message for pediatric plant-based diets is that vegan and vegetarian diets are safe and adequate when they're appropriately planned. We need to ensure sufficient calories and micronutrients, including reliable sources of B12, calcium, and vitamin D. We want to avoid overly restrictive regimes and provide fortified foods or supplements as they're needed. We have to remember that infancy and early childhood are stages of life when adequate growth and development are the top nutritional priorities. 
Plant-based diets can be less energy dense. Like all diets for infants and toddlers, they need to be designed to ensure adequate calories and nutrition. The bottom line is all diets for children, regardless of dietary pattern, need to be appropriately planned to ensure nutrient needs are met. And this just, you know, to prove a point, which lunch tray is more appropriately planned? You know, people assume that an omnivorous diet is going to be somehow superior to a plant-based diet for children, when in fact it really is the other way around. Plant-based diets provide far more nutrient dense, they're more, far more nutrient dense. They provide more of the essential nutrients we need generally, and they're, they're more conducive to lifelong good health. When we think of the SAD diet or the standard American diet, over a third of children eat fast food on any given day in, in the United States. Close to 70% of calories come from highly processed foods. Fewer than one in 10 children meet recommended intakes for fruits and vegetables. Uh, this is appalling. And, and so we really need to consider all of this. About 50% of American children and adolescents are either overweight or obese. The reality about vegetarian and vegan diets is they're higher quality diets. They're associated with higher intakes of fruits, vegetables, and associated nutrients. They're lower in, in sweet and salty uh, snacks. They're lower in total and saturated fat, and they reduce the risk of obesity in children. And if we look at overweight and, and, and obesity among vegetarians and vegans, if, you know, two of the big studies that have compared people eating a variety of dietary patterns are the Epic Oxford study and the Adventist Health study too. And if you look at the BMI or the body mass index um, that, that um, the individuals who participated in these studies uh, uh, have, you can see, so what I wanna show you is this, this yellow uh, region is what we consider to be a healthy BMI, which is essentially between you know 18.5 and, and, and 20. 4.9. Uh, and what you can see is everyone in all dietary groups of these health conscious individuals in Epic Oxford were within the healthy BMI range, but the vegans were the leanest of all uh, categories. And in, in the Adventist Health Study too, the vegans were the only uh, group that fell within the healthy BMI range. The lacto-ovo vegetarians, the fish eaters, and the meat eaters were all above, they were all either, well, they were all in the overweight category. Obesity is above 30. So what we need to recognize, however, is some ve vegetarian and vegan diets are more healthful than others. You know, when you think about this uh, snack that this little girl is eating, it's a 100% vegan snack. It doesn't mean it's good for you. Ensuring adequacy in a diet involves providing high quality food, ensuring a sufficient quantity of food, having a wide variety of foods in the diet, and adding in fortified foods or nutritional supplements when they are indicated. <music>